everyone! There are two versions of this video. A more in-depth first drive report, and this one, a shorter, more perfunctory one. If you're someone who thought the Volkswagen ID4 all-wheel drive first drive was too long a video, stick here. But if you want to get a real feel for the Rivian R1T, you may want to go here instead. Hello from the Rockies! I'm in a place called Breckenridge. It's at 10,000 feet and it's 7 o'clock in the morning and we had a frost last night, which is wonderful. It's mid-September and I'm going to get behind the wheel of the Rivian R1T for the very first time. This is the first press drive event. I've been lucky enough to be invited on it and so today I and some other lucky journalists are going to put these trucks through their paces on and off-road. Being a first drive report, we didn't get as much time with the R1T as we would ordinarily get, so it is now time for a little voiceover. Unlike most media launches where you get to spend a few hours driving a new vehicle on paved public highways, the focus of Rivian's event was its off-road capability. So while I could go through the specifications of the front trunk, complete with power lift, or detail the twin 15 amp 120 volt power plus in the bed, the integrated bed cover, or in fact the number of impressive accessories that you can get at launch, this video is going to focus on the off-road capabilities, and as you'll discover in a moment, the optional camp kitchen. But I am going to spend a little time talking about the interior based on the 10 minutes or so I snuck with the R1T the night before our drive. The cabin is really nicely finished in a range of different materials and is a really nice place to be, with more cubby holes and storage than I've seen in a vehicle for a really long time. There are even underseat storage totes, coat hooks, and a flashlight stored in the driver's door where you'd find an umbrella on an upmarket car like a Rolls Royce. It even recharges between uses. There's a large, responsive centre touchscreen display which gives you all of the access you need to vehicle controls, but which sadly I couldn't film during my drive because there were three other people in the truck with me. So Arian's cooking breakfast for everybody here today off an R1T. This is the optional camp kitchen that comes out from the gear tunnel. It's detachable, so if you do opt to have the camp kitchen and then you don't want to take it with you somewhere, say you want to go snowboarding and you want to use the gear tunnel to put your boards in, you can just detach this and leave it at home. I was really impressed with the camp kitchen capabilities, as you might be able to tell, and breakfast was a delight. But altitude sickness was already setting in, and because of that, I did opt to drive first. Now, there's an, a, there's an assistive technology on the steering, but it's very subtle. You can feel it kind of wanting to keep you on the straight and narrow. It's a decent amount of feedback. It doesn't feel too heavy and it doesn't feel too floppy. Like other modern cars coming to market, all of the climate control is controlled by the onboard computer, so there's no manual vents for you to operate. You have to do everything through the touchscreen display. But unlike a lot of HMIs in modern cars, this is really responsive. Actually really impressive about how quick it is. This reminds me a lot of some of the farm tracks we had on the farm where I was growing up. Nothing like super nasty to worry about right now. And because of the, the massive amount of power that these motors have, you get regen braking every time you descend. Because this is electric, obviously, you don't have problems of lost power with altitude, which of course any internal combustion engine off-roader is going to have. And that's a real benefit because it means it doesn't matter how high or what the terrain is, you're still going to get the same response off-road that you would if you were at sea level, which is just bonkers. And we're actually using the camera on the front of the R1T to see the trail ahead. And it's a really great way of seeing what's ahead and what we can, what we need to worry about. There's some big boulders that we need to be careful of as we go through here. And if you'll forgive me, I'm just going to concentrate on driving for a second. So we've just engaged rock crawl mode. And in rock crawl mode, the auto hold, which we've been able to make use of up to this point, 
doesn't work because that enables you to use two feet, so one on each pedal. And I've got to say that in Rock Crawl, it really allows you to go a long way before you get your, your throttle to do anything, which means you can really finesse what's going on. Look at that articulation. That is awesome. Come on, come on, baby. Little to the left? Little to the left, there you go. Keep it left as you go over that big rock right there. Come on. Come on, puppy. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, come on, girl. You can do it. So we're now going to do some really fun articulation tests. We're going through a bit of a, a valley here. And... Uh, Let's see how we can do with this climb. Come on. No hitting the truck, no hitting the tree. Thank you. What did I think of the R1T? From the short time I spent with it, I was impressed by its off-road capabilities, its quad motor drivetrain and finessed accelerator response. I loved the ability to monitor any of the cameras on the truck when off-roading to help get through a tough pass. And the ease of off-roading was frankly remarkable. I never felt in trouble behind the wheel despite having altitude sickness and the truck let me know what was going on at all times. On the road, I really didn't get enough time to pass judgment, but I'm hoping we can get some time in the near future, especially as I'd like to see how it compares to some of the other plug-in pickups coming to market. The Rivian R1T is a remarkable feat of engineering. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel compromised, and it feels like it literally can do anything. Unlike a lot of first-time vehicles from startup automakers, it felt like it could have been made by one of the big three. It might cost a pretty penny, you'll have little change from 70 grand, but it offers the kind of features and competency that make it worth every dime. And in a world where pickup truck off-road aficionados pay double that for an off-road capable lifted trail crusher, I think based on my experience thus far that the R1T is worth its sticker price. Being first to the market gives Rivian some pretty nice perks, like setting the bar for all who follow. And frankly, I think Ford's F-150 Lightning, Tesla's Cybertruck, and whoever else wants to have a go, have their collective work cut out. Electric off-roading is here to stay, and I'm in love. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our two other channels, Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We know that while a fair few of you are already subscribed, many more aren't. So go on, hit the bell and help us out. Let us know below what you thought of the video. And if you're not someone who likes the YouTube comment section, who does, then why not continue this on our Discord server? It is free and we'll leave the link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire Tihi crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, David Janakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tazla in the Gong, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jean Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ricky Leong, Brian... 
Newton, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnik, Christopher Jones, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin and Kofi. And of course, you can buy your very own TE swag like this shirt and our Red Bubble store. But before I go, I do want to thank again the team at Rivian for helping get me off the mountain. It really did make me realise how important, good, well-trained mountain rescue teams are and I'm going to be donating some of my personal money to a mountain rescue charity of Rivian's choosing as a thank you to their team for literally saving my life. And if you are going up into the mountains, be prepared. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.